All right, here, let's get this show on the road. This is uh, Podcast 32, The Stone Roadie Show with the Stone, the world-famous Stone Roadie Craig Reed and my co-host Griff Martin and action. Welcome again to The Stone Roadie Show with Craig Reed. The Stoned Roadie, the world's most famous stoned roadie, and even more so stoned today than normal because he just took a pain pill because of his arm hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see his background there. Uh, looks like uh, Ronnie and Gary and Peter Rudge that back there behind him. And uh, that's part of uh, Craig's new green screen effect that he likes to... Uh, put up it pretty clear there i have to say and then uh, we wanted to start the show off the stone roadie show off today by recognizing some people um uh starting off uh with uh mark howard mark howard there uh over on true uh road stories there he's got a little bit of a leg problem he's been laying out and, uh, they thought he was going to lose his leg there for a little while but turns out uh, i think it's not quite that bad, but he's still in a lot of pain with it. Uh, Gene Odom got some news. I think his granddaughter's not doing too well. Anybody wants to say some prayers for Gene Odom and his granddaughter? Uh, she's uh, having some health issues. Uh, I know what, what it is, but I, I don't want to share that because Gene might not like it. And uh, then Paul Abraham, he recently had some surgery, and he's... Uh, understand he's having some more issues and he's not really wanting to talk about it yet but hopefully we can get him back on here and then of course we have our beloved uh stone roadie craig reed with his uh elbow what was that craig a piece of shrapnel from the airplane <laughs> yeah right oh about eight years ago i fell backwards and landed on my elbow and shattered my elbow fell slipped on some ice and then in January, I took another fall and fell. I had a steel plate in my arm right here. And when I fell on my elbow again, it disrupted that plate. And then I had a dang hole in my elbow that wouldn't heal. And they needed to take that steel plate out. And uh, they wanted to, told me they, they could numb my arm. They could numb my whole arm. So they... Did some could put a needle in here or something? And I couldn't feel nothing last night. I couldn't move my. I, I tried to hard, my hardest to move my fingers. I couldn't move my fingers. My whole arm was, was numb. I touched it and it was just dead. And at yeah, twelve hours later, I started getting feeling back in it. And that was just a couple few hours ago. And now I'm I'm getting a little bit of pain, but they gave me some pain pills. I had to sign for them and tell them I could I wouldn't sell them or give them away or nothing but but uh yeah hopefully in about a couple of weeks it'll be better but uh that's about it with me what uh tell us a little bit about that um picture behind you there with uh Ronnie and Gary and Peter Rudge were you were you there <laughs> when it, did you take that picture uh I don't I don't I I I, I might have I I don't really, it's black and white, so I might have, I don't really remember. I don't, I just found it in my stuff and it's just, they were obviously in a meeting and Ronnie and Peter Rudge and Gary were sitting there talking about something, but uh, I don't really recall what was going on right now. That was, God, that was 45 years ago, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, what was old Peter Rudge like? What was uh, what was he, he like hanging around? Pretty cool guy, was he? Yeah, he's a English guy. He's, he's a real cool guy. Um, you know, he managed the uh, the Who and and uh, you know Ronnie Ronnie met Peter Rudge during the Who tour and and uh, Peter was real interested in in Leonard Skinner and. He didn't really, um, he was their manager, but he kind of realized that, you know, that was Ronnie's ship and just kind of let Ronnie just, you know, be at the helm and, you know, Peter would give him advice, you know, but Ronnie, he, he didn't bug Ronnie too much about the direction of the band, you know, I figured. 
Yeah, he kind of respected Ronnie's work that work ethics, and you know, he and Peter's the one that uh, um, when they started first signed their contract with Alan Walden, they they more or less signed away all their their writers royalties, and they didn't even own Freebird. Alan Walden owned all those songs, and and Al Cooper. Between Alan Walden and Al Cooper, Skinner didn't, you know, really didn't make any money the, you know, the first year. When I got, when I got with them, they, you know, we did think, you know, they had their first album out and they had some money. Oh, contraire, you know, like you said, when I, when I started with the band, Ronnie lived in that little apartment you were talking about. You had the mailbox and yeah. Gary, Gary was still living in his mom's house and, and Alan and Kathy had this little shack over on, on uh, Blanding, and and uh, and uh, Billy was still staying at home, and you know they did. I had more. I had a credit card. And I, I had more money than they. they you know, I guess <laughs> I guess that's not why I never looked up to those guys as being just being my friend and not superstars because <laughs> it was one time I had more than they did. <laughs> like I said before, I was using my credit card to put fuel in the, in the, in the van and the truck to get them for gig to gig. And then they would get settled, you know, they'd get the settlement and then they'd, uh, you know, give me the money they put on my credit card, you know? And yeah, we got $5 a day, all of us. That was per diem. That would, that's how every day we'd get five bucks, and that's all the money we had. You know, I mean, me and Gary and Alan and Billy would not eat when we first went to Hollywood doing the second album. We wouldn't eat all day, so we could buy some pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah, and then, um, you know, Peter Rudge. Uh, I think it cost him a million dollars. I don't know. I think he paid uh, Alan Walden a million, and then he might have paid. I don't know. I, I I just remember that figure. I don't. I don't. I think each one, Alan and Cooter, both got a million dollars. Al Cooper to to go away, and then uh, and then they got their writers' royalties back and stuff, and. And, uh, yeah, Peter was a cool dude, man. He's, he's the one that, you know, got him where they got him out of the situation. You know, like Ed King was in, you know, when Ed King started, you know, he, he didn't have any, I mean, he had, he had strawberry love and sent some peppermints. That was like a number one song and he didn't have, he didn't make it one, nothing off that song. You know, that's what, that's what people think, you know, oh, I'll sign with this guy and I'll be famous and I'll be rich. <laughs> <laughs> you can be famous, but that don't mean you're rich. Your yeah. manager gets rich. <laughs> Anybody who wants to really hear a, a, a good story about how managers rip people off, check out the bad finger story. That was a, that was another really sad story. Uh, but Craig's going to be putting up these backgrounds, and we're going to be having some cool stuff to talk about when Craig puts them up. He's got all kinds of pictures and things, so... Uh, that's going to be something we can look forward to. You can see my background. I'm right in the process of moving. So I had to take everything off the wall back there and it's all boxed up. And so I grabbed one of my paintings that I did that uh, I threw it up against there. It's swamp, a swamp painting, a swamp music. <laughs> so that's about the only thing I have that I haven't packed yet because it's too big for a box. So... Anyway, uh, Craig, we uh, we can go right into the questions if you want. Um, yeah, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Craig's That's feeling good. a little, I'm, little bit of pain I'm a little, with that arm. I'm a little, I'm a little foggy here. <laughs> okay. My arm, my arm just started hurting. Like this morning, I was gonna call him. I go, man, what's up? I can't even, I can't even put my fingers together like this. I, I did it like that. I try to screen, you know. And then it, uh, I, I started getting, man, I tell you what, without them two fingers, you can't pull your pants up. You can't, yeah. you can't hold, can't hold a bowl, you know, <laughs> or a lighter. Well, yeah. How you flicking your lighter, man? When you got to hold your, your uh, pipe. I got to use this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, 
Oh God, I've been spilling stuff. Oh man, oh it's pretty ridiculous. Well, you got to take care of yourself, man. You know, you live by yourself, and then you got your dogs. That's all you got. So yeah, I, I, last night I I could have really hurt myself. I mean, I, I I literally couldn't feel my hand at all, and I was, you know, I was if I'd have bumped, I could have broke my fingers, or I wouldn't even have known it. You know, so I had to be real careful last night. They told me to keep it in a sling until until I could feel my hand, so that's why I'm not wearing that sling. Well, we hope it gets better for you pretty soon. All right, let's go oh, ahead yeah. and get into the questions. Uh, a lot of the same people asking questions, a lot of great questions. Um, this uh, first one is kind of interesting. Uh, I think I'll answer this one because it's kind of funny, kind of comical. Um, Michael Pensinger uh, ask uh, if he could see Craig's bank account number, but I'm sure it's empty. He says, well, <laughs> when, uh, when I first met Craig and I was talking to Gene Odom about Craig and I says, uh, you know, I was going up to see Craig and, uh, and then Gene says, well, if you can get that treasure map from Craig and I go, what kind of treasure map? Well, you know, Craig's got money buried all over his property up there in mason jars. And I told <laughs> Craig, I said, Craig, he says you got money buried all over the place in mason jars. And Craig, Craig said, well, I wish I did. <laughs> so you guys don't be trying to figure out where Craig lives and bring any kind of a shovel or a metal detector up there because... You, you don't have any money buried up there, do you, Craig? No, I, I have I I have ways of uh, getting rid of any extra money I have. <laughs> I think Griff can testify if if it's made. I have it here at the, the, the Fort Reed. <laughs> yeah, Craig. Craig usually, if he buys something, it's the best. It's not like the cheapest. You know, he always like that yeah, green a, screen back there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I shaved, and I was using a razor, and somebody suggested I get a electric razor. So, I, you know, I had to get the best one I could get. So I got a brawn. It was three hundred and fifty bucks, man, for a damn razor. But it's supposed to be the best. Well, not actually. There was a Panasonic that was five hundred, but. I don't know. I like the brawn name better. <laughs> yeah, said you got a brawn, don't you? Panasonic sound like a stereo company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then we got Brian Boggs is asking, any updates on Randall Hall and Barry Lee Harwood? Both were part of the Allen Collins band, and Allen selected Randall Hall to replace him in Leonard Skinner. Well, I could probably answer the Randall Hall question uh, because I just saw him not that long ago and got to visit with him and uh, he's doing well um, but uh, I think he had some problems with a nerve in his shoulder which is uh, giving him a, a little bit of a fit for playing guitar but he looks healthy and alive and well and uh, Barry Lee Harwood what do you know about him Craig? Anyway. Man, Barry Lee Harwood can play. If it's got strings on it, Barry Lee Harwood can play it. That guy is amazing, man. I mean, and uh, what the song? What was that song you were telling me? Somebody was one, uh, uh, playing uh, mandolin or fiddle on, and we didn't know. And you said it was Al. Well, I thought it might be Barry Harwood, and it was Al Cooper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? That's Al what Cooper? somebody told me. Yeah. Huh. That, that, that song, I don't know what song it was, but somebody says, who's that playing mandolin or fiddle? Yeah, that's what it was. I, I don't know. Anyway, somebody said it was um, Al Cooper. You know, well, I'm a little bit confused here today. <laughs> sometimes the fans know more, more than, than um, their stoned roadie. So that's, <laughs> that, that's why we got them on here, right? Okay. <laughs> Gonzo Hills, I was wondering what venues were best, worst for loading in and out, and were there any memorable funny stories about that? Um, 
like tricks played on each other anything strike your memory as far as oh that? god we had some totally ridiculous load ins and load outs i couldn't tell you what i when i was a production manager i would call and i would say you must have a forklift there you know it's absolutely necessity that there be a forklift there and you know and these guys go well I'll, I'll just have 10 guys there you know and we won't need a forklift it don't work you, there's no there's some of that stuff is on the end of that truck right on the third level and there's i don't care how many guys you got you can't get that stuff down you know and we would sit there and i go i told you you had to have well i thought i could have 10 no <laughs> it don't work that way you got you know and you'd have to sit there for an hour waiting for somebody to bring a forklift to you you know is that how they Except over in japan the man them guys in japan you can't say that in Japan. I mean, if there's something up there, they'll, they'll climb on each other's shoulders and get it. And we're like ants, man. Them guys, those Japanese stage hands were incredible, man. I mean, they just, you know, they, 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 they take a picture of everything, you know, everything. And they take a picture of it. And, um, you go in there the first day and load in and they take pictures of everything. You know, the, the second day you go in and they can put a, a lot of it up, you know, right where it's supposed to be. And by the third day, the crew don't even have to be there. <laughs> they, got, they put everything together. It's, they're incredible. But yeah, they just, they'll just they just get under a grand piano, about a hundred of them, and <laughs> take it wherever you want it to be. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> well, how do they usually load the truck up? They loaded it by hand, right? Yeah, but, you know, if you have, uh, the only time you really need a forklift, in a, in a, in a, well, sometimes if stuff's real heavy, you just, you know, you can't lift it two levels. Some of them amp racks and the speakers are, you know, but you can't really take a forklift in the truck. But, yeah, I mean, you get to right to the end of the truck and sometimes you got some, you know, some stuff because more or less the, the the rigging truck you know it's got all that's what goes in first you know the the stuff that flies in the air you know and then the sound sound stuff comes in and then you load that in and then band gear is the last stuff to go up because it's it's the first to go out so you know and then you know like i said the lights the, uh, the lights and all the rigging goes in first and then it's the last thing to come down and all that stuff's really heavy and uh and then you know the sound comes in you put all that up and then band gear stuff on the stage comes in that's the last and then, that's why working for the band's the best because you're, you're the last one in and the first one out first <laughs> you don't have to get up until everybody else is up and then you your first one on the bus party and you know <laughs> i imagine the uh every venue's different too so it's probably yeah and that's that's why i didn't like to be stage manager and production manager when you have that position you got to stay in there until it's done you know when i was a guitar roadie man as soon as my guitars were in the truck i was in the bus partying man. <laughs> like that one that one venue you said that it was kind of like a round stage and it was real small and you had oh to god yeah that up, but it ended up working it was in canada we walked in there we just sat down laughing we, we can't do this you know and then you sit down and you just say well we could put a case down there so that 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 other leg for the piano <laughs> on there. you just kind of work it out and some of them shows where you don't think you can do it turn out to be the best shows that you know, I remember that. That was a killer show, man. And we didn't think we could even pull it off. But, you know, you just could do what you got to do. Eliminate a couple of things. Speaking sometimes. about the uh, Canada show, isn't that where Artemis was throwing the drums and hit Ed King in the head with a drum? <laughs> <laughs> and you was there for that, right? Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, no, it was Gary. I think Artemis was playing a keith moon <laughs> kicking his drums off the stage and stuff he was upset about something and 
Yeah. <laughs> and then I think you had to actually uh, help. Well, him Gary, out. Gary looked at me and said, you know, we the uh, Artemis is a little out of control tonight. We just need to kind of get him off the stage. And I was that one that had to, you know, be the initiator of that situation. And he, when he looked at me in the eyes, it wasn't a very good look. <laughs> And we didn't speak for a while after that, but we're cool now. Yeah, because I re I remember that you were kind of like saying, you know, I didn't like the way that that ended and everything. And somehow I got. I t I just said, man, Gary, you know, Gary tells me to do something. I could do it. He signs my paycheck. <laughs> I can't remember if I got uh, Artemis' number to him or you or got your your number to him. Yeah, I, I had I had his but, number. I but might you guys, it. yeah, you guys finally. Well, Chad, him. Chad keeps him. Chad and Chris are still good friends. Chris Pyle, Artemis' son, my son Chad and him are good friends. And Marshall, and and Chad too. Chad and Chad and Artemis have really always really been close because. Chad lived at the beach and Artemis, uh, Jack's beach, and so did, so did Artemis. So yeah, they they hung around quite a bit. Chad hung around with, my God, he, he there after I left Florida, him, Alan, and Chad were real got real close, and because uh, Chad and Amy, Alan's Alan's daughter, were, you know, good friends. They grew up together, you know, Artemis or uh, Chris and Marshall and Amy and Chad and. Karina and you know uh, Melody, you know they all they all grew up together. Well, you can't you know, begin to peel the onion back the layers of the stories of who's mad at who. You can't figure it out, but hopefully when it's all all those things, uh, they're all patching themselves up. You know, Gary's, yeah. you know, Gary's, uh, you know, he's a, he I, he's a, doing really good except for his his health his you know, his, um, his attitude toward things is changing. You, you know, just like you, you went to the show and you, you yelled at him, Hey, Joe Crimp, you know, wants to talk right. to you. And he yeah. turned around and went, Hey, how's Joe doing? You know? And right. then, yeah. And then I, I, I think somebody, uh, Gary just got Joe Crimp's number the other day. He was going to call. Yeah, him. Actually, I, I think he might've been watching the, the podcast when I told him, I said, Hey, uh, Gary, Joe wouldn't mind talking to you, and, and he asked uh, somebody for for Joe's number. So, Joe, if you're listening, we got uh, we got that in work. We're trying to get that number to uh, to to uh, Gary, so he give you a call. All right, let's move on to another question. Uh, Jim Folds, tell us about setting up Stevie's Fender guitars, and is that why he played so good? Um, <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yeah, he mentioned something about Gene in here, but what do you what do you have to say about? Uh, I never, I never really remember doing anything to Steve's guitar, except for changing the strings and wiping it down, and you know, putting some graphite on the bridge and another or whatever. Yeah, I didn't didn't really get into Steve's guitars, you know. I didn't really do a lot of technical work on their guitars. I really didn't, you know. I mean, I, you know, I'd set the intonation. And I'd check that every day, and just simple stuff, you know. Maybe just the neck a little bit, you know, the truss rod or whatever. Just I remember the first like time that. you change string, you know, ch change keys and bridges. And you said when you uh, uh, first uh, was around, I guess Steve. Uh, when he was playing his guitar, you guys smoked pot all day, and he, <laughs> and he, and he yeah. could still play just as good smoking. Yeah, pot that's a yeah, that, yeah. When he he did that gig out there, when he first played with the band, and every go goes, that's the one, you know. I mean, he was really hired right after, but he got on stage with them when Kathy brought him out there, and they, Alan looked at me and said. That's the one, and they just told him to meet him in Myrtle Beach for the next, you know, to you know, he sent him a tape and said, "Here, listen to these." And I think he already knew music, some music, you know, but yeah, he showed up. He, he showed up. I don't know, one or two in the afternoon, way before the band got there for sound check. And I mean, we just 
smoke pot for about, <laughs> you know, I don't know what time he got there, but it, probably about <laughs> three or four hours, we just sit and smoke pot. And he wasn't until, you know, so most people, you know, would go, oh my God, I, I, I better, you know, back off, you know, I'm, I better, you know. <laughs> he wasn't. A, he was used to it. <laughs> Maybe it made him better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I was amazed. I was amazed. He wasn't intimidated at all. Yeah. Well, recently you went to your high school reunion, and I guess Brian Boggs knows a little something about that. Did Craig operate the guess your weight booth at his high school? <laughs> Oh, I don't. Well, I told a bunch of people that about my podcast there, and I, and uh, all you people are fat. <laughs> I mean, my God, it's 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 crazy. I mean, just they're just all fat. <laughs> I saw a couple of women I dated. One of them, Jackie, she didn't look bad, but. <laughs> The other ones, boy, they were, and my ex-wife, she didn't, she looked really nice, but, um, the rest of them, yeah, they were, <laughs> well, we won't get into, portly, in. portly to say the least, yeah, <laughs> we won't get into any names, Chris, uh, Chris Waldron, uh, did Jojo have any intimate relationships with anyone else in the band besides Alan? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> See, I tried to get these questions. Craig's loop yeah, out. I don't want to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> Craig's on pain pills, and I figured I'd hit it with a good question. But Jojo uh, told the story about when I had my camera, and, I was, and they were up on the riser. I was shooting up their dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember hearing her. Uh, <laughs> interview I, I think uh, I, I think i think i even drilled holes in the bottom of the riser and put and put a sign up peep show and you can get in there <laughs> look up the hole. <laughs> oh. yeah it was, we had a good time they you know they just took it you know <laughs> They go, and, they, craig! <laughs> and craig as far as them getting paid they didn't really get paid for, I think JoJo said she didn't get a salary for that. They just fed them and and paid their way the entire time. No, no, they did they get they pro they probably made the same with us roadies made. They probably were in the same pay scale as us roadies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I never really uh, I thought you know how did how did they get paid? Were they ever recorded on anything that? They, they really weren't, right, as far as recordings go. The live thing, you know. Yeah. The live album. But, yeah, they, yeah, they, I think they, um, God, so, yeah, you know, they were only there for, you know, the last, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I can't really remember them being in the studio. They had... Black, I know they had black chicks in there one time. So yeah, going back up, but you know whatever, whatever they did in the studio, they Ronnie wouldn't, Ronnie wouldn't record anything unless he could play it exactly like the record live, you know. So then when they had put horns in, they had to have horns, you know. And then when they had the chicks singing, they had that's when they hired the honkettes. But yeah, they didn't sing on the uh, first thing they did. You know, I think I don't remember. I think JoJo was the first hunk that they hired. I'm not sure, but you know, we put, we did a lot of shows with Wet Willie, and uh, that's where you know I think Ronnie noticed Leslie. And to tell you the truth, I don't know how Cassie came around because she was she was singing Broadway stuff. Um, I think she was in Jesus Christ Superstar or something. I, I know uh, her hair. Yeah, maybe it was hair. I know Steve was telling the story about he went to see Cassie doing Broadway and she came out topless and 
and he was with his mom and dad, and they were going, what? And Steve was going, all right, <laughs> sister. She came out the, I think it was hair she was in, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, while we're still on the subject of recording, uh, Rob Tennis, when they recorded One More for the Road, was there a live feed video in the recording truck? If so, who would add those recordings now? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, there was, uh, that's why you see two microphones. You know, sometimes you see people don't know why there's two microphones. One of them goes to the PA and one of them goes to the, to the live sound truck. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there was a sound truck there, yeah, for that one. Anytime there's a lot of recording, they have a sound truck there, yeah. It's just not done from the board or anything. There's an actual recording studio truck set up, yeah. And everything had, you know, there's a microphone to the out front where there goes out front, and then there's another microphone that goes to the recording truck. Everything's double mic'd. All right, I'm just going right down the list here. I'm not leaving any out. Herb Gruer wants to know, is Craig a closet chubby chaser? <laughs> no. I, don't, I can vouch for that. A no. <laughs> I, I can go ahead and vouch. I, I, I look at women and try to figure, I, I really, I look at women and try to imagine what they would look like if they weren't so fat. Because <laughs> there are some women out there that would be absolutely gorgeous if they would lose a hundred pounds. Yeah, I, mean, really, I don't know what's wrong with women anymore. They just they've got let their self go to shit. Everybody's yeah. uh, just uh, you know ninety five percent of the women are overweight, if not obese. Well, I, I think it goes for men too. Everybody's. Fat ass. Well, I don't look at the men. America. <laughs> America's no yeah, America's the fattest country on the planet, period. Yeah. And okay. it's, it's disgusting. Joe Mueller, what pain meds did Craig get after surgery? Just wondering. Oh, that thing, that, the Oxycontin thing that starts with a D. I told them that Percocet and, and um, Vicodin made me constipated. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I didn't Why? speculate having a lot of pain, but you know, I had my buddy pick up my pain meds, and I, I had to call him and say, "Hey, will you?" Because I had to sign a piece of paper. I had to sign a paper so I wouldn't sell them or anything, you know. So I called him, and made sure my because I can't drive, I, you know. Um, right. Well, you know, they pro not yet. probably gave you just enough to get you through, so. I think they gave me 28 and yours four a day and they're for a week. Yeah. So that's 28. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, let me see. Danny Barron, what gauge guitar strings did the Skinner boys use? Well, I guess 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, and 46 on the Les Pauls. And Alan used 9, 11, 12, 16, 3242 on a strat and they were dean markley's and and i'm not i don't remember if steve i think he used 10s 10 13 17 26 36 46 i can't really remember that it might have been you know it's either that or 9 11 12 9 11 9 11 16 <laughs> that's what 26 32 and 40 yeah. did they keep a, uh an acoustic guitar around like on the bus or anything no 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 uh -uh. so there was never really any practicing like when they were on the road in between gigs or anything they just no, now and then alan or one of them normally steve always had a guitar with him at the hotel sometimes alan would ask me to bring one of his back but not on unless they had days off you know but steve normally took one home and took one to the hotel okay danny baron again here there is a black and white recording of a skinner show ed was still in the band but no billy ed played parts 
where the piano was. What happened to Billy? Is that where he was thrown in jail that time? <laughs> he probably, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. There was something happened that, yeah, he, he, something happened. I don't think he got hurt or anything. I think he went to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Which did happen from time to time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. TP, interesting name. Who out of all the Skinner boys actually read music, orchestrated it on paper? Ed King. I mean, he said he couldn't, but he could. Right. Mike, Mike Estes said he. Yeah, Mike said that he, he yeah. did it. Uh, well, his 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 whatever he is his publishing company name was i can't read music <laughs> but yeah he, but yeah but mike Estes said yeah he he uh, yeah he he could read music he he was too detailed in his knowledge of <laughs> music which I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't play, so I don't, I don't know, but you know, I imagine but, Gary and Alan, they would know. I mean, uh, definitely Gary, uh, G Gary or Alan don't know how to read music. Bill, yeah. well, Billy, Billy, Billy read music. Yeah. I mean, uh, they would know whether or not Ed knew probably, uh, Ed said he couldn't read music, but he, he always said that, but yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he can. Okay, Chris Godwin asks, "Is the Van Zant house still an Airbnb?" I believe it is. Um, it's for sale. I know it's for sale, but um, it's been for sale. I think ever since it became an Airbnb. I don't know why they fixed that place up and made it. They should have just left it alone. They made it. They tried to make it so a bunch of people could stay there, and it's just not the same house. I mean, I hate to say that on air but it's the truth they yeah it's in a it's in a alone. really bad part of town that, um it is but they just should have left it alone yeah. i mean they, they added to it and it's you know it's not the same house i mean yeah, it's, it's, a, it's same it's, house but it's not the same when they yeah, lacy added a bunch of different rooms on there gene says there's not one square wall in the whole house <laughs> 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 and i can vouch for that i uh, I think I, uh, Jimmy Withers was telling me he did the tile in there and he said that was the worst. It was the well, hardest job he if, ever had. If, 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 if Gene didn't do the work, it's not right. <laughs> Gene, Gene does have a good eye, no pun intended. You know, he's only got one eye, but that one eye, he's, he's really good with seeing things that aren't straight. So, okay. <laughs> Kim Voigt, uh, I've been curious about the pronounced album picture. Ed said that at the end of the photo shoot, the last picture shows lightning straight down to his head. <laughs> yeah. Harry got sick to his stomach afterwards. Yeah. The lightning strike or the thought of uh, one hitting Ed. Well, I know I didn't hit Ed, but. Yeah, uh, uh, Ed said Gary threw up right after that picture. Yeah, I, I wasn't there, so yeah, I, I heard he was on the verge of puking when they were taking the pictures. <laughs> Gene was there, and he told me the story about that fire. He said that that fire was uh, it was some pretty crazy, uh, you know, it was really close to him. You could feel the heat from that fire going off, so... It yeah, was. I guess. Yeah, that they. Yeah, every time that they would hit that, they would you know do it, and every time they hit that fire, Gary would flinch. I guess you know, so they had to take it a bunch of times. Yeah, every now you had the hit. green screen. Yeah, it was pretty intense, you know, and they were, <laughs> and Gary would jump back. I guess you know. So well, that's hot, all. That's all the questions, Craig. So it looks like we're gonna wrap this one up a little early. Normally we, uh, we yeah, run over, cool. but. Craig's got a bad arm, so we're going to go ahead and <laughs> wrap this up. And this is uh, going to be podcast number 32. And hopefully next weekend we'll get we'll get us another guest on here. So, yeah, I'd like to get – Paul said he's not ready to talk about whatever bad news. he. But we, we've been talking for – and I even asked Paul a couple weeks ago if he wanted. He said, yeah, I'm ready anytime you are. But then I was – 
even thinking about calling him today and then I you know read where he says he's not ready to talk about it yet so we need to get yeah I'd, uh, that friend of Tim or uh, Gary Gary's friend Tim, Tim yeah he he wants to come on and do one too but, yeah, yeah he knows a lot of good Gary Rossington stories and then uh, of course he knows a lot of people too but he was just a kid back in the day I think he's about my age and he took care of Gary's horse so we need to get him on here but all yeah, right. I've been reaching out. I, brought, I I reached out to Frankie from Tesla, yeah. and and I don't know if he got my message. I've been I don't like to ask people to come on. That I'll just drop them a little hint, you know, you know. Well, I'm right in the middle of moving, and Craig's got a bum arm, so we're we're kind of like in a limbo here. But we'll get back on track. You ready to wrap it up, Craig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let uh, me get my more, more people like this board. I think they did the common call. I, I think they just like me to sing, you know. <laughs> so here we go. That was number 32. And uh, yeah, um, what's that thing I Happy sing? Trails. <laughs> Happy Trail. Happy trails to you until we meet again. <laughs> and that's going to be a wrap of the Stone Roadie Show with world famous Craig Greed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff Martin, the Rockin' Scientist. We'll call that a, we'll call that a wrap. <laughs>